Tell everybody uh, who you are and a little about yourself. Okay, uh, my name is Sean Williams. I'm a 25-year-old full-time college student. I study criminal law at West Wing. So, I play the bass in my free time. I don't know what else there is to say. So what, uh, how did you first hear about the Occupy movement? Uh, Ron, Robert, uh, people know him as Pirate online. He's, uh, he's been trying, he was trying to drag me down for the rally and he tried to drag me down for the first couple of days and I was kind of resisting because I was sick. But when I heard they needed a webcam and a few tables, I was like, well, I have a webcam, an extra one, because I had two, and a bunch of camping tables that we use for camping. So I brought them down here and kind of never left. So why are you involved in the Occupy movement? Well, much like everybody else who came here, uh, you come down to see what's going on, you learn a little bit about what's been going on, and you kind of get mad and get involved with it. At first I was just here because I, I was useful. You know, I can do college and this at the same time, and this is kind of a, a its own little makeshift community, and it needed hands, and I have hands. And then after that, it just, everything that, everything that had been told to me my whole life about that's just the way it is, about the poverty line and education and 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 it just started clicking as to why? Why is that the way it is? Why are we doing nothing about that? Why? Why? You know? And I just, I didn't understand why. In the, in the 60s, the civil rights movement happened and no one just asked, oh, that no one just said, that's just the way that it is. They said, no, we're not going to stand for this. We're going to do something about it. And that's kind of what you see now is people saying, no, we're not standing for this anymore. We're going to do something about it. And well, somehow doing something about it is being around here and getting the information out. What would you say to the detractors, the people who uh, dismiss the Occupy movement, uh, especially just out of hand as, you know, a, Camp, uh, you know, camps of, of hippies and homeless people. And uh, well, first I'd have to uh, clear up the, the common misconception that the 99% involves the poverty stricken and the homeless because that's just not the case. We have people down here who are uh, business owners and homeowners and middle class and there's that weird gap of the working poor, as my mother always called them, the people that uh, make too much money to be on assistance, on state assistance, but don't make enough, enough money to make their ends meet. And they're part of the 99%. And it, 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 once you kind of change that perspective, I had a friend who told me that, that they, she wasn't part of the 99% because she could afford her bills and her health care. And I told her that just because she could afford her own health care doesn't mean she wasn't getting screwed over by her bank and her government and her any corporate authority in her life, you know, it's just... So, I don't know. It's, I, think, I think it's more about educating people on who the 99% are and look what they're doing to you. So what would you say specifically, if someone walked down here right now and said, you know, that this is a, a worthless movement, this is going to fail, uh, you guys are idiots, what would you say to them? Uh, I usually say, when they say something like that, that it's better to have stood up for something that may fail than to sit by and watch something and let it happen anyway. I, I, I would honestly rather be a part of something that I knew was going to fail, but at least have tried and defended myself than just sit there and go the rest of my life letting it happen. So what do you see in the future of the Occupy movement as a whole and specifically Occupy Tacoma? I think that people will refuse to go backwards. I think at some point we may end up going home but we're not going backwards. We're not going back to banks and their bank fees. We're not going back to that compliant sense of thinking. We're not going back to um, uh, the sense of uh, lethargy where, where people can just if you put it in fine print and put enough words there, we're just not going to read it and just sign away our lives. I think we just won't go back to that mental state. We're going forward regardless because people have woken up and now they've, they're going to have to reestablish themselves from here. Now, what do you hope, ideally, like best case scenario, what do you hope is in the future? Uh, that is kind of a loaded question, I guess. I, I'm. I hadn't really thought about it. I was just kind of celebrating the win that we have now, the change in thought process as it is now. From here, anything is possible. To reestablish a government by the people and for the people, that's what I would like to see, I think, uh, overall. Some of the humanity, that sense of humanity. Go to the doctor's office and be treated like a patient, or go to the bank and be treated like a 
person, not, not a customer, not a consumer, not a statistic. What would you say to people who support the movement but don't agree with some aspect of it or think it's being run wrong? I would probably encourage them to, to do things their way. The occupation movement isn't really about any one person's idea for doing things. It's about starting up conversation, getting many points of views, getting many perspectives, getting many voices in on the solution and and as long as we can garner that conversation we're doing pretty good the people there are people down here that camp 24 7 and there are people down here that don't come down here at all and they still support and help their information when we don't have media their hot coffee in the middle of the night their lifeblood they're the guys that say thanks for being here for me because I can't that boosts morale they're the business across the street that says, here's popcorn for your movie nights, so that, again, we have morale. And I think that's pretty cool in its own right. People have found their own ways of, of supporting the movement, if it's anything but blogging and alternative radio to, to coming down here and pitching a tent. Now, you've been here since... Day uh, three. Day three. Yeah. What would you say is the most valuable thing you have uh, experienced? Community. I don't, I, that right off the bat, I, I did not know, In uh, I grew, was born and raised in Tacoma, and I did not know that if we were out here, we, people would come together like this. I was always told that in the big cities, people didn't care about each other like they do in, in smaller towns, and I can stand today and say that is just not true, because we've been here, and the outpour of the community in, in support has been just heartwhelming. I'm so proud to be a part of Tacoma right now. It's I would never leave this place. Anything you want to add? Uh, not particularly. All right. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you.